Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back. We are still learning the MFRS 116 uh, property plan and equipment and our focus is uh, now on initial measurement and in this session we're going to look at, at how do we uh, calculate the uh, initial cost and um, before we start let us just have some kind of quick uh, review of what we learned in the previous uh, uh, video sorry so uh, if you can recall element of initial cost are actually um, comprising of three elements which I've listed here and uh, I'm now providing a sample pro forma of how to calculate the initial cost this is just sample pro forma which is just an example without any amount so if you can see here the purchase price and the trade discount with the cash discount that is actually part of element a which is under purchase price that should include this um, and then you have um, the import duty and taxes as well under a so this is all under a this is also under A. And then you have delivery costs, installation costs. These are directly attributable costs that is necessary to bring the asset to its intended uh, location and working condition as intended by the management. And this is actually B. And then you have the dismantling and restoration costs, which is going to be incurred in the future, but the uh, uh, initial cost should have included the present value of that future costs yeah in the uh, calculation of the initial cost that is under initial estimates but this is not so much of our focus in this uh, um, learning of uh, mfrs at the beginning uh, of the learning so this will be covered later on and um, the next one here if you can see the last two here is also under b which is directly attributable cost testing and professional fees Okay, now let's look at what are those costs that are excluded from the initial co initial cost, meaning that this will not be added to the initial cost, but these are the costs that are not directly attributable. These are not directly attributable to bring the asset to the present location or condition as intended by the management and uh, that is for the intended use. And what happens is that if this is being excluded, this is normally the cost that you need to treat as an expense. So this will be expense of. So these are the example of it, cost of introducing uh, the new product or service, cost of opening new facilities, cost of staff training, training the staff, whatever cost incurred for employees that perhaps to learn how to operate the machine, the equipment, losses that you have incurred before your mass production, before your commercial production, you have incurred loss, that, that shouldn't be included in the initial cost, advertising, promotional activities, is maybe launching of the a product that is not to be included admin and general overhead cost your operating cost exchange loss let's say you buy your invent your um, ppe or your machine or your equipment uh, using uh, foreign currency uh, foreign currency either that is done in malaysia or maybe you bought it from the foreign country using a foreign currency which is not malaysian ringgit you may have incurred exchange loss cost of relocating or reorganizing uh, part of or all of the entities operation if you relocate your uh, operation for example these are not part of the cost cost of conducting business in a new location you move to a new location maybe you will have a new customer whatsoever these are not part of the cost and these are also not part of the cost the sub start up and pre-production cost unless these are necessary to bring asset to its working condition but the pre-production costs are normally not included in the initial cost so they are being excluded so these are the coverage as i mentioned uh, initial costs earlier was the elements now we are going to look at the initial cost for the property plan and equipment purchase for cash purchase on credit meaning that you don't pay cash you wait and you are given some credit period to settle the payment and also if there are exchange of asset we start off with the property plan and equipment that are purchased for cash 
So let's look at the first example here of a TTN, which is a reporting entity that places an order for a machine. And that machine was purchased from Germany and that that was delivered to the company on 31st of March. So that is the date of initial recognition because that is the date that you receive the machine from your um, supplier in Germany. The supplier price or also known as purchase price, invoice price right, or lease price if give, is also given a cash discount. This cash, cash discount should have been deducted and also given a trade discount. So those 3% uh, and 2% must be deducted against the 250000 And they also pay import duties, so import duties and taxes. These are also part of the purchase price and that should be included in the calculation added to the purchase price because that will be the total that are being paid by TTN later. Next is to look at the uh, other cost, the other cost which is transportation cost from Port, Port Klang to the factory. These are the other costs that are being incurred. This is uh, directly attributable cost. Shipping cost from German to Port Klang which is actually 1,009 and 8,000 re respectively. And they also paid for start up and pre-production cost for start up and pre production cost these are excluded cost start up pre production cost 11500 right that is together and also some admin cost incurred in pro processing the purchase of the machine so to process some order uh, purchase the machine right so these are not part of the cost so that was just before you purchase the asset and then the installation cost was being paid. Uh, the uh, inspection cost 4,800 and the installation cost was 9,500. These are actually also incurred installation costs are necessary to prepare the assets for its intended use to make sure that you can use the machine. Next is that the company closed the account on 31st of December each year. You are asked to calculate the initial cost and show the journal entries to record the purchase of the machine and also show the uh, statement of profit or loss showing the presentation and uh, the disclosure of the machine and also the statement of financial position. Let's look at what we have here. I'm now putting back the question here so that you can have easy reference. So we are going to calculate your initial cost. But these are the details that I have already put here to make it easy for us to look at the calculation. So these are the calculation where I've already mentioned that earlier the purchase price should have included the 250000 right? And then the trade discount must be deducted, the cash discount must be deducted and that must be added with the import duties and the transportation costs. Um, which is 1,900 and then you also have the shipping cost 8,000 and also the installation cost 9,500 the one that I have already bolded there that is part of the cost and you will see that the uh, product start up on pre-production cost of 11,500 is not included that will be expense of this one and the um, uh, admin cost that is incurred to process the purchase order 4800 and uh, that was uh, 4008 that will not be included as well so the total initial cost is 20 uh, 27050 so 270050 right that was the case so you can check here that the discount is being deducted against the purchase price for both cash and trade discount next so the total initial cost is to uh, the figure that you got here that is the initial cost next one is the journal entry for the journal entry the first one is to record the purchase so this one is to recognize the the acquisition this one is to record the acquisition of machine and the machine here what you record should be at the initial cost. 
Next one is to record the expenses that shouldn't be included in the initial cost. Remember the start up and pre-production cost. These are all to be expense off. So when you put debit to the expenses, it will later go to the profit or loss. The total amount will be credited to the bank account because you paid. Unless that was accrued, that will be adjusted against the whatever uh, accrued expenses. But here you, you paid the amount. And that is the cost excluded from the initial cost. When I say excluded, it means these are being expense off. So it is an expenses actually. Next, so these are excluded. Both costs are excluded. So it will be part of the profit or loss item under the administrative expenses. Next is the presentation. The presentation, the statement of uh, financial position will take the initial cost and the initial cost will be uh, shown at the amount which uh, is the um, the date here we assume no depreciation yet so it is the carrying amount at this point we have not yet yet learned depreciation so the carrying amount is still the initial cost here when depreciation is assumed and when depreciation is taken into consideration this might not be the carrying amount that will be covered in a a few more videos. Expenses for the start up and pre production costs that will be uh, expense off, and same goes for the admin costs. These are operating costs. Let's look at the example. These are the example that was taken from the textbook. This is about Digital Com completes installation of telecommunication network facilities. So that is uh, the um, the so-called PPE, the uh, telecommunication network facilities, and uh, these are the costs incurred for that um, to ha happen, and these are the prior costs incurred. So you can see that there are several things that has been included here: cost of overseas trips to search for the um, telecommunication facilities that you are going to purchase, maybe the tower, right? that one cost of site preparation cost of telecommunication machinery and equipment when you have got the machinery and equipment that you decided to purchase which will be the telecommunication network facilities after being completed you go and decommissioning it you install it you assemble the uh, the machinery and equipment you test the network the company here digicom and this is directly attributable fees perhaps the engineering work done for you the cost of opening the network facilities so these are the costs incurred and not all costs will be included so the cost that will be included is this the cost that i have highlighted in the purple there or maybe it's like it looks like a shocking pink there right so those are the costs the cost that i do not uh i just simply leave it as black are the costs that shouldn't be included because those are the costs that are not directly attributable costs so did you dg telecom has a right to operate facilities for 10 years so this is the expected life of the uh, usage of the um telecommunication equipment and machinery after 10 years the company requ is required to decommission or to go and uh, take it out from the wherever you have uh, have it built and that estimated cost to decommission it is 33780 the estimated cost here assume this is at present value next you have to calculate the cost of the telecommunication network facilities. So these are focusing on those uh, the uh, items that I've highlighted in in rather purple or pink earlier. So these are the things that I have put that sign there. So these are the costs that are being incurred. Site preparation and the I, uh, the machinery and equipment itself, the delivery, handling cost, commissioning, installation, assembly. Yeah, and then uh, cost of testing, directly attributable cost, and also the, uh, the initial estimate. This is actually the initial estimate, which is normally at present value.
So the present value means the value today you expect to incur in the future, perhaps someone, something different. But here the cost is estimated at 33,780,000. So the total cost is 453780. That was the initial cost for property, plan and equipment. Next one is for the purchase on credit. So for the purchase on credit, there are normally involving some credit terms. So you may have some normal credit terms that will normally take within one year period to settle the amount. Uh, and the cost is normally the cash price equivalent at the recognition date. Normally is the date where you got your asset being delivered to the reporting entity. That is the date of acquisition. Deferred pay uh, or maybe sometimes you also need to incur some interest because these are not paid on cash. So when it is paid on credit, so interest will also involve deferred payment beyond normal credit terms. This, this is normally more than a year where the cost is going to be the present value of all future payments. If let's say future payments is the next five years, what are the present value of that five years future payment today on the date of recognition? So the difference between the cash price equivalent at the recognition date and the payment that is record uh, and the total payment uh, therefore will be recognized as interest. So this one will be covered in a more advanced uh, coverage of MFRS 116 in your uh, study in FAR 270. But this one is covering just the part relating to um, the normal credit terms, right? And then uh, what happened is that this initial cost on credit purchase of uh, property plan and equipment, it will be added to the cost, meaning that that is also similar to the treatment uh, for the purchase for a cash basis. So it is capitalized. Capitalized means to be to be a part of the cost of property plan and equipment included to include that as the part of the cost or part. Uh, but that means it will be included in the statement of financial position. Now we move on to the acquisition by way of exchange or trade in. So you have your asset, your PPE, you are going to trade in for another uh, asset okay. that was uh, acquired in exchange. How to determine the cost of an item of property plan equipment that is acquired in exchange, which is uh, uh, if for the manner in what you call trade in. Yeah, is a trade in. And MFRS 116 requires that the cost of an item that um, is being acquired, acquired in exchange. You have an old one, you are going to exchange with a new one. So the old one will have to be um, excluded from the lease of the asset of the company and the new one will now be included. And uh, it will normally be measured at the fair value or the market price of the uh, asset in exchange unless the exchange lack commercial substance meaning that you are uncertain about what are the future cash inflow that will be able to be um, generated by your uh, let's say existing uh, P property plan and equipment that, therefore or maybe you can uh, use the fair value yeah where the fair value can be the value of the asset uh, given up asset given up and if the acquired item is not measured at fair value, normally the cost will be the carrying uh, amount of the asset given up. So asset given up will be the asset that we are going to replace with another.